Dr. Jaffe, I have recently heard a suggestion that taking vitamin D before bed can suppress melatonin production. Since vitamin D is naturally stimulated by sun exposure, is it best to take it in the morning or is there an optimal time for taking vitamin D? Well, it's a very timely question indeed. Uh, the, the, the simple answer is the best time is the time when you will actually remember to take it. And that is because vitamin D is unusual, it's fat soluble. We call it a vitamin, but it's not really a vitamin, it's a neurohormone. And it's a neurohormone that has two arms and they wiggle. And if they meet the edge of a cell, they stop wiggling. And if they meet another cell, they stop wiggling. And they say to those cells, thank you. You don't have to divide anymore <clears throat> because this little space, it's a very tiny molecular space, is filled with vitamin D. Now that was a little technical, but if you translate that into common parlance, it means if you have enough vitamin D, your cancer risk goes down. And if you're low in vitamin D, your cancer risk goes up. And that is true. So if you're a typical American with a vitamin D well below 30, probably below 20, you have a much higher risk of lifetime cancer, like one in three, <clears throat> versus people who have 50 to 80. We know that 50 to 80 is safer. We know that 50 to 80 dramatically reduces your cancer risk, et cetera. But more is not necessarily better. So there are some people who say, well, maybe your vitamin D level should be 150. Maybe. But I believe in Goldilocks. You remember Goldilocks? Not too little, not too much. Just right is just right. And that is the way it is in almost all of biology, almost all of physiology. And now let's get back to this question <clears throat> because there was a study in which they tested giving melatonin systemically and the marker of how effective the melatonin drug, because melatonin is not systemically released in biology, not in physiology. You have to do that to the body. So they were giving people large doses of melatonin and they were measuring in the urine the suppression of vitamin D effects when people got large amounts of melatonin. And melatonin is a powerful antioxidant, powerful. It's made and used within a very short period of time in the pineal gland, in the deep brain where it's needed. It's never flooding the body, never. So somehow the communication got that because melatonin would suppress vitamin D oxidation, ergo therefore, maybe we should pulse the vitamin D or take the vitamin D at certain times. Except vitamin D is fat soluble. Fat is long time. So you fill up your vitamin D stores and then you, if you have too much vitamin D, it's okay, it goes away. But if you fill up your vitamin D stores in your fat pads, which we have, all human beings have fat pads. Polar bears have fat pads, they need them. But for whatever reason we do too, very few species do, not even orangutans or monkeys but we do. So we can store our vitamin D in our fat pads and then we can release it slowly over time, which means it doesn't matter what time you take it. The most important thing is what I said in the beginning, which might have been all I should have said, which is just take it and get your vitamin D into the healthy range of 50 to 80 so you can dramatically, I mean like by one third or more, reduce your risk of cancer. And if you combine that with other healthier supplements and lifestyle choices, 
you can reduce by 80 to 90% the chance that you'll get sick ever in 100 plus years. Some of you have heard that I am eager to be dancing with my friends at 120, and I'm planning, and I'd like you to be there. And that means we need to take enough of the good stuff and reduce the intake of the bad stuff and metabolize the toxic matter bad stuff so that we can continue to renew our body and our spirit, our mind, and our soul for as long as the time allotted to us is. I don't know that the sun will rise in the morning. I am not 100% sure of anything. But I am very sure that this has helped my parents, myself, my children, my friends, my loved ones, those who will listen and who will take advantage of the opportunity to translate information, inspiration, and uh, motivation into the most important piece, which is what the individual does. And that's their effort, their perspiration. So yes, we want folks to know that the neural hormone called vitamin D is very important, that it reduces risks, including cancer and others. And we know what the healthy goal range is, 50 to 80. And by the way, we know that many people have enough digestive problems that they don't absorb vitamin D from their intestines, so they actually have to take it under the tongue. Drops under the tongue, swallowed before, um, just swallowed, sorry. Drops under the tongue that can be easily swallowed. Drops under the tongue that can be easily swallowed. And then they go to the brain before the body, and that's a good thing, and they do other good things. And so you want to get the vitamin D in sufficient to bring your level to the 50 to 80 range for the 25 hydroxy D. Yes, you can measure all three forms of vitamin D3, but that's complicated. You can even quantify D2, but I don't recommend taking it, so I wouldn't quantify it. And so I try to focus on the things that matter for life for quality of life, for duration of life, for life as we know it, in an evidence-based but objective and humble approach. So, vitamin D, most important to keep it in the 50 to 80 range. Whatever time of day you take it is fine. Do not confuse an academic study with something that actually opens up uh, a question uh, that, quote, defies physiology, but it does open a question, and physiology almost always answers the question respectfully, and we do that here. 